In this tutorial, we are going to unlock a new arrhythmic operator called the modulo, and we're going to use it to create a checkerboard pattern. So what is a modulo? I'm going to delete my code here and just use the console. So a modulo is essentially a way for you to be able to test whether number A is dividable by number B. <laughs> and and if, if so, uh, what is the remaining number um, that comes off of that division? So, so this is um, going to be learned through practice and, and learned through observation. So I'm going to show you a series of examples here. So I'm going to console.log here, and a modulo is represented by the symbol, um, the percentage symbol. So, so here it's going to be, um, let's say, 10 mod 10. So, so let's backtrack and, and think about the question. Is 10 dividable by 10? And the answer is yes, right? So 10 divided by 10 is 1. So indeed, 10 is dividable by 10. And um, there is no number that is being left off. There's no remaining number here. So 10 is dividable by 10. When we click play, we're going to get 0 inside the console because you know, we, there's nothing that's being left off. And, and this, this number that's being left off here um, through this, this modulo process is called the remainder. Okay, I'm going to keep going and just to see a variety of example. Um, so the second question here is 10 dividable by 9. <laughs> And, and when we say dividable, uh, what we're saying is, is uh, division only in integers. So, so you, we can't go into decimals. So that's kind of the general rule of thumb when it comes to working with the modulo. OK, so the result of this, let's hit play, is going to be 1. <laughs> and 1 is the remainder, the remaining number. Um, that's resulted from 10 mod 9. Why is that? Uh, let's think about this for a second. Um, 10 is not quite dividable by 9, right? So in order for 10 to become divided, dividable by 9, we have to take 1 off 10, right? So if we take 1 off 10, then it will be dividable by 9. And we can try to keep going, console.log, and 10 mod 8. And let's see what this would be. Is 10 dividable by 8? Um, and the answer is, the remainder is 2, because yes, it is not dividable by 8. And so if we want for it to be able to be dividable by 8, we have to take 2 off 10. Then it will be dividable by 8. OK, so um, we can actually keep going. So if I here say console.log, 10 mod 7, console.log, 10 mod 6, um, they're kind of following a similar like playbook here, right? So so neither one of those numbers are really able to divide 10, not at least not when it's only working with integers. Um, so in so, so the remainder that we're gonna see is you know for seven we're gonna need to take three off of ten for it to be divided by seven and we need to take four off of ten to be dividable by six. Okay, so the next stage, let's try console.log 10 mod 5. Is 10 dividable by 5? <laughs> and the answer is yes, right? 
10 is indeed divisible by 5. 2 times 5 equals 10. Nothing is being left off. So 10 is dividable, dividable by 5. And that's why inside the console, we see that 0 occurring again, right? And, um, and if we keep going, um, I'm just going to put two more example. Um, console.log 10 mod um, 2 or console.log 10 mod 1. These are all going to give me the result of 0, right? When you see this like number 3 here in the console, it means 0 has been printed 3 times because these last 3 results um, in terms of yielding for a remainder are all zero because these numbers we have put in are all um, able to divide 10 with nothing left behind. Okay, so, so with this knowledge, you might ask, how is this useful in programming? Um, one of the immediate way this is useful is we can actually use the mechanism of a modulo to pick out odd and even numbers out of a for loop. So um, I got this template here that I will include in the video description. It comes from the, the last tutorial on nested for loop. So when I hit play here, um, this upper portion, our little testing unit inside our function setup, we see that we have a nested for loop that draw four different grids, right? Um, so if I want it so that the upper left of um, this grid is going to be blue and the lower right of this grid is also going to be blue, so like a simple checkerboard, pattern here, I might, you know, without using modulo, I might do something like um, this. So so I might use an if statement and I, I, I would probably say um, if x is equals to 0 and y is equal to 0, Then field is going to be 0, 0, 2, 5, 5. And else field is 2, 5, 5. So let's hit play here and there you go. I am able to specify that particular um, grid like on the upper left hand side, right? And, and I can actually tell it to, to turn blue by using the equal sign. I can, of course, also indicate the bottom right using the same kind of strategy. So I can say or um, x equals equals to 1 and y equal equal to 1. And if I hit play here, I get that upper left and lower right. So what's wrong with just going with this method? Um, this is going to suffice if we're just just like drawing four different um, rectangles, but <laughs> we have a, a full page of grid with like hundreds of rectangles. And if I use this method, it's going to take me a very long time to like, you know, figure out exactly which squares need to be what and, and all of that and writing all these different Boolean expression to make it happen, right? So, so this is where a modulo can come in handy. So I am going to delete this for a second and I'm going to try to write this program still in our little testing unit using the modulo. Okay, so here is the, the thinking. Um, so let's look at the upper left and, and what is happening over there. When I look at my upper left, I see that both of my x and my y are um, even number. 
And when I look at my lower right, both of my X and my Y are odd numbers, right? So unlike my upper right or lower left, um, these, these are consistent and they, you know, they're either even number or odd numbers. So, so what I can then try here is using a modulo to, to sort of um, figure out whether a X and a Y it has any remainder of zero or remainder of one, right? Okay, so, so the way we do this is we can say if x mod 2 equals to 0 and y mod 2 equals to 0. I hope this works. <laughs> okay, so, so as long as x and y are both even number, if you are an even number and you will always be dividable by two, right? I hope so. So so let's do field zero zero two five five and else again field two five five. So if we hit play here, ding dong, there it is, upper left, and now we need to point to the lower right. And that's going to be um or x mod um, what two, 2 equals to 1 and x oh, y mod 2 equals to 1 and we hit play again and yay okay that's great love, love a little testing unit and we are going to take our if statement, our if else statement, in fact, and I'm going to comment my top portion out, hit play, make sure I don't leave anything off, and we're gonna come back down and look at our grid that we drew from the last tutorial again, and I'm going to just plug this in. So hopefully it's just gonna work like magic, right? So if I hit play here, Wow, it actually works. Okay, so so this is this is the idea, right? Because now it is looping and finding every other number for both the x and the y whenever it is um, at even number or at odd numbers. So so just to just to make it even more clear, I'm going to um, delete this part for a second. So we only are pointing to when X and Y are both even numbers. And I'm gonna hit play here. You see that, okay, it actually skips and find every other cell and color that in, right? It's just, it's just that it doesn't, it doesn't find the, the next row because, <laughs> because for the next row, it's a different situation where we need to pinpoint the odd numbers <laughs> Uh, for for both x and y, right? So so if I add that back in, um, hit play, then we fulfill both um, possibilities um, for this checkerboard to work. <laughs> so so now you know try to apply the similar logic and and see what different kind of things you can do, right? Now you can make different kind of patterns. For every every row and every column, there can be a different kind of shape, different kind of color, or different kind of transformation that happens, right? Um, but this is the basic idea of how you would expand and build upon the idea of a grid and create variations among them. And hopefully through this, um, you can also figure out how you can pinpoint specific cell and change specific cell, either individual ones or by group.